I've had my Tesla Model 3 for over two years now and I have over 30,000 miles on it and I have a lot to say, so let's just get right into it. So a lot of you wanted to hear about the wear and tear of the Model 3 after two years. So the interior, the exterior, and my thoughts about not getting it ceramic coated or a paint protection film on it. So first let's talk about the interior. So I did get the white interior. Do I regret it? No, the white interior is really good. It makes the interior just stand out compared to other vehicles. It makes it more premium. It makes it feel like a Tesla. Like the white interior is the flagship Tesla look in my opinion. Now I've done some wild things in my Model 3. Um, I've made a video where I exploded a watermelon in it and I've also poured espresso on the back seats and I let it sit for quite a long time. So if you're curious about what happened with those over the course of two years, the watermelon exploding in the Model 3 did nothing. Um, watermelon just wipes right up. It comes right off the seat. The espresso, on the other hand, it sat on the white seats for quite a long time and it did something to it. Like, I don't know what happened. I cannot get the stain out. There's a very like faint looking stain in the back of the seat where I had the espresso. If you're not looking for it, you won't see it, but I see it, I know it's there, it's always there. Do I regret pouring espresso on my Model 3 just for a YouTube video? Yeah, whatever, but what can you do? The cost of being a YouTuber. Okay, this is me literally filming two years later. This is where I poured the espresso. Like I said, like it's hard to see. And like, this looks like a shadow right here. But this is where the espresso kind of like sat. It's hard to tell, but you can see it. For me, whatever, it's my fault. But overall, I think the white seats held up really, really good. This is the back and literally the only bean that comes back here is my dog. She's always in the car with me and even if her feet are dirty from the park or whatever, it wipes up really nice. As far as the two front seats where no funny business has happened, they look really good in my opinion. Like all I do is just wipe them with baby wipes. I've never really thoroughly cleaned them. They look really good to me. But just for the record, this is my, <laughs> this is my type of attire. I do not wear, I typically do not wear jeans. I don't wear really like crazy dyed stuff. It's all this like brownish tan fabric, um, either this or basketball shorts. People that wear black jeans, blue jeans, they have had issues with dye transfer. Um, I personally, nope, no issues with that for me. The front seat where I sit, I think held up even better. Like, it doesn't really look stained at all. Like, honestly, maybe like right here, like this part and this part does look a little bit darker, but I think it just needs to be like, at this point, like cleaned with a deep cleaner, not just baby wipes, because that's really all I use. But yeah, for the most part, two years of wear with not really much cleaning effort, I think it looks really good. So down here is like a more fabric. Like this isn't the leather part, so this is dirty right here. This needs to be more like cleaned. Um, and of course, my whole car needs to be vacuumed, but I just wanna be real and show you like at any given moment, this is what it typically looks like. This isn't after like a full detail. This is just quickly wiping down with baby wipes. So closing remarks on the white seats, do not be afraid to get them. In my personal findings, the only issues I had is when I purposely spilled a large amount of liquid on them. If you are eating in here, if you drop some ketchup, if your kids are in the back eating and they throw like, I don't know, goldfish, whatever, if they drop their drink, it's not gonna be a big deal. It's when you're stupid like me, hungry for views and you purposely pour espresso on the seat. That's when I had issues. My dog being back there, her muddy paws wipe up fine. My husband in the seat next to me, him eating, getting food around, that wipes up fine. So do not be afraid of the white Tesla interior. 
it makes the car like it looks so good in here nothing else in the interior has really worn down in my opinion it all looks good um the gloss on the center console i hated so i put a skin on it but other than that i have no complaints about the interior pa over the past two years so the exterior a lot of people want to know you know the quality of the paints do i have any rock chips stuff like that for the most part at least to my you know average non obsessive eye it looks fine to me so the tesla model 3 doesn't really have like a proper bumper or grill it's just all paint basically so it's kind of expected that you're going to get some rock chips i do have it but it's not a big deal it doesn't bother me okay and i want to show you guys the front too because um i mentioned the scuffs and stuff so first of all you can see there's pretty much always going to be bugs stuck to the front. Like I just cleaned this not long ago, but the fact that there's no grill, it's just all paint. You're going to have bugs there. Um, you can't be too anal about that. Um, and as far as like paint defects, like right here, that's a tiny little scuff from like a rock. And they're just kind of, you know, around, like there's one right there. But most everything you see right here is just bugs. I don't know if you can see that right here. There's a little defect in the paint. That's from, you know, a rock chip or something. But for the most part, like, I think the paint looks really good. I take this thing through touchless automatic car washes all the time and it looks fine. You know, like for me, like, paint looks pretty good the car is nice and clean and then people wanted me to give my opinions on uh paint protection film and ceramic coating and stuff like that so you know do i regret it not getting it done after two years honestly no i do not um i'm not really one to be super obsessed with um how my car looks i'll hand wash it every now and then but for the most part i just take it through a touchless car wash and i'm good to go i will kind of hand clean the front to get the bugs off but other than that i'm not really one to be super obsessive and take pride in the way my car looks um, as long as it's clean you know i'm good to go no hate to people that you know are into that but just for me personally i don't see the value also too a lot of people are you know trading in their model threes for refreshed model threes that they bought two years ago and they spent how much money on ceramic coating and paint protection film just to trade it in for a new tesla and you know they're not adding value to your vehicle so at least personally for me no i i don't see the points so how about accessories if i was going to buy a model three right now what accessories would i immediately just buy right away so after you know owning the vehicle for two years, I kind of know what's needed to kind of improve the vehicle. So immediately off the bat, I would get weather floor mats right away day one because I live in Florida and it's just sandy and beachy everywhere. So it's way easier just to dump the mats versus trying to vacuum sand out of a carpet. Uh, secondly, I would get a skin on the glossy interior right away if you have the older Model 3. The new one's kind of solve that problem. Thirdly, I would immediately get a SSD drive for sentry mode. Do not get a micro USB card with a converter or whatever. Spend a proper amount of money, like $100 or so, get a good solid state drive and it will work for a long time. People will get thumb drives cheap out and then they kind of fail over time. Also too, on my Model 3, keep in mind it's the original version, I really like the Jada hub. So basically you plug it in and it keeps your um, your sentry mode drive hidden and it keeps the wires down and it keeps it way neater in there. So definitely pick that up as well. I may have a unique perspective because when I picked up my Model 3, I had the 18 inch wheels and I was, I was fine with them for a while, but over time I grew bored of them and I realized they kind of make my Tesla not really look as sporty as I want it to be. The 18 inch aero wheels made it look more like an electric vehicle and I want it to look like a sports car almost, you know? So I opted to get the 20 inch zero G wheels. And in my opinion, they are like the nicest wheels that Tesla makes. I really love them. I do not regret that decision at all. 
This is obvious, but if you're going from 18 inch wheels to 20 inch wheels, they usually look way better. But then when you go to 20 inch wheels, the ride quality is going to be less. It's going to be bumpier. bumpier. You're, there's going to be a higher chance of tires being blown out if you hit potholes and your range is going to be way lower. So I would frequently go from my house to a city very far away on one charge with the 18 inch wheels. But then once I picked up the 20 inch zero G wheels, I then found myself having to supercharge for a few minutes in between. So just my personal experience um, with 18 inch and 20 inch, if you really like the looks and if you're willing to take the downsides to that, it's worth it. If not, go with the smaller wheels if you don't really care about stuff like that. And like I said, I love these zero G wheels. These are the best wheels on a Tesla. <sighs> but one thing I hate about Tesla rims, they like stick out. They're so flush with the tire. So if you hit anything, these things are going to be scuffed up. So back here, it kills me to admit this and show this, but literally like a week after I got these beauties, I hit a pothole with water in it. I didn't know it was a pothole. It scuffed up my rims right here. Um, and then also down here. I know it's not bad, but it was enough to, you know, ruin my day. Also too, I wanna show you these pictures. So this is what my tire looked like after I hit this pothole. Um, I'm not typically one to hit them pretty much ever. Um, but of course, you know, soon after I got my new zero G wheels, I hit one and I basically survived with my tire looking like this for a month or two, but I was going to go on a trip, like an 800 mile trip. And it was just like bothering me. I was like, I need to fix this tire because if I end up getting into an accident or having a flat tire on the side of the road over this damn tire, I'm going to be mad at myself. So I just went ahead and scheduled an appointment with Tesla through the Tesla app. They replaced the tire for me. The killer part was the Michelin um, Pilot Sport 4S tires. They're expensive. Um, for them to replace one tire for me was $400. So you can kind of do the math on what a full set will be for me in the future. It was killer, but pain is beauty. If you want good looking tires, they're expensive. So try not to hit potholes or curbs if you have the biggest, bougiest Tesla tires and wheels. So next, let's talk about software stuff. So after two years, you know, what do I think? So first of all, the software and the touchscreen on the Model 3, it has worked beautifully since day one. It has not slowed down. It behaves like an iPad. Like it's a very fluid experience. It's not like what a lot of older automobiles are like where you press stuff and it lags and it takes a lot of time. No, like this feels like a proper smartphone or iPad experience. And it's felt like that the whole time I've had it. It is not degraded, slowed down or anything, at least for me. Okay, just to be real, I'm getting into my Tesla. This is, you know, two years later after ownership. I'm gonna show you exactly what it's like to use the screen. So we got in. When you first get in, it can be a little laggy, but it seems like it loaded up perfectly fine. But just for example, like we're clicking, we're clicking, like it's good. So as far as like the map of the United States, like it performs well. It responds very quickly. It loads all the superchargers. It's great. It, I, like it, Two years later, it's operating brand new. It's not like a legacy automobile at all. And two, a lot of people have complaints about just having one screen, no dash in front of you. I have never once had an issue. The um, Even you know your speed is to the right of you, which people find weird, but you just get used to it. You know, like it's right there. It's just right out of the corner of your eye. I've never had an issue. I've never found myself struggling, trying to figure out what speed I'm going. And also too, it's very like comforting and freeing when you're driving at night to look forward and you don't have any lights below you. Like it makes your vision, I think, better. 
Since Teslas are very, you know, software based, that gives you an opportunity to get a lot of software updates. I mean, it's just a screen, right? So there's poten the potentials for updates are uh, limitless. So I've gotten a ton of updates since I've had my Tesla. I'm sure like at least 20 major updates. Some notable ones that I really enjoyed. The, the day I got home, my Tesla installed an update that increased the power by um, 5%, which is crazy. So basically my Tesla was quicker just from a software update. I found that amazing. So when version 10 was installed, that's when we first got access to Netflix and Hulu and more games and stuff like that. So that was fun. And then uh, this following holiday season, we got a holiday update where it updated the driver visualization and made it bigger. So that was pretty cool. I will say in 2021, we have not gotten many updates at all. It's already June and we have not seen much. We're waiting on full self-driving and version nine of beta, but so far it's been kind of a boring 2021 in terms of software for Tesla. Also the phone app, you know, I've been using the Tesla phone app over the course of the last two years. And for me, I'm kind of boring. All I use the phone app for is to uh, pre-cool the car before I get in it. I'll use the app to check the, um, the battery on the car if I'm out of town. I will use it to summon. But for the most part, I'm not like an extreme power user on the app. Um, I just use it for the basics. Also too, just something to point out, the phone app has not gotten a drastic redesign since I've had my vehicle for two years. It's, in my opinion, looks way better than any other legacy automobile app but it just feels kind of dated right now. I would have expected them to kind of completely redesigned it. We're kind of hoping that's coming soon, but we'll see. Okay, full self-driving. You know, this is a big thing. This is very controversial with people because full self-driving, right now it's $10,000. You can buy it, put it on your Tesla, but then if you want to buy a new Tesla, Tesla does not give you proper credit for it. Even if you're selling a Tesla private party, it's kind of hard to recoup your costs. For me personally, I paid $6,000 for full self-driving uh, a few months after I bought my Tesla. And since then, it's increased in, in price by $4,000. So just from that alone, you know, that's great. I saved $4,000 by buying it early, but <laughs> um, it's not full self-driving yet. You know, that's a big complaint that a lot of people have. I do realize that there are people beta testing full self-driving beta, you know, where it can drive around town, it can take turns left and right, all that stuff. But for me, my $6,000 that I paid, what did it get me? The value I've gotten. I got my, I got my hardware three um, computer installed on my Tesla. I have automatic lane changes. I have summon, smart summon, navigate on autopilot, auto park, and stuff like that. Like spending like the $6,000 on full self-driving, I feel super attached to my Tesla because I do not want to sell my Tesla and then buy another one and have to pay $10,000 for it, you know? Because then that would mean I've spent $16,000 on full self-driving. I feel very obligated to hold on to my Tesla as long as possible to get the most value out of full self-driving because I do believe despite all of the setbacks we've had that Teslas are going to be, you know, literally full self-driving one day. And I think the fact that I spent $6,000 on it in 2019 is going to appear to be a very good deal at some point. So let's talk about the battery and the charging. So my Tesla is the long range rear wheel drive and it originally had 325 miles of stated range. Now, the last time I charged mine to full, I saw about 293 I believe is what I saw now I have not calibrated my battery ever I do not obsess over that I typically keep my Tesla on um, percentage versus total miles so I don't really worry so I went from 325 miles to 293 miles so not too bad and from what I hear degradation isn't supposed to be as drastic as more years go on it's supposed to be the most drastic in the first few years so charging a Tesla is so simple and basic and uneventful. I've, I've had no issues with it. You, lit you literally just plug it in and you have a 
full tank of gas every day you wake up. So it's pretty cool in that regard. I do have the benefit of owning a house and a garage, so it's very simple just to plug in there. I do understand that people that live in apartments or condos may face some other um, issues with that. But over time, and as EVs get more widely adopted, I'm convinced apartments and condos to be more um, competitive are going to have to have EV chargers installed on their premises. So I wanna show you guys too my charging setup I've used for basically the whole two years. It's literally the free Tesla mobile connector that comes with every Tesla. But I just bought the special adapter for the 220 outlet I already had. And this outlet was installed by an electrician. The total was under $325, I do remember. I used to use this Siemens charger when I had my Chevy Volt, and I would use the J1772 adapter with my Tesla. But for whatever reason, the Tesla would error out. Um, and I searched online, and this particular model just doesn't seem to play well with Tesla. And every day when I get home, I just plug it in. It's as simple as that. It's so much more convenient than gas. And when I get home from doing some errands around town, this is usually what I see. It only takes about an hour to top off the charge that I ended up using. The mobile connector is fairly fast at eight kilowatts compared to a normal outlet, which is like one kilowatt. And a lot of people wanted me to comment on the price of charging my Model 3 over the last two years. And it's kind of hard to calculate that because for one, I get free supercharging, so zero dollars there. But two, um, everyone has a different price they pay for their electric. So me quoting what I would pay would be different than what you would pay. But just to give an example, you know, say my elect electric bill is 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So it would be about $7.50 to completely charge my Tesla. But I also have solar panels, so really the cost is free. So it's very difficult for me to calculate, but it's way less than gas. Kind of a general rule of thumb if you're trying to figure it out, whatever you pay in gas per month, you could divide that by four to kind of get an estimate what you would pay for your Tesla. So if you pay $100 a month in gas, you would pay like $25 a month on your electric bill. A huge misconception is that when you get a Tesla, your electric bill is going to skyrocket, when in reality, the increase on your electric bill is going to be way less than what you paid for gas. So that's never going to be an issue unless your electric is really expensive, which I think the most expensive electricity in the whole nation is Hawaii at like 30 cents um, per kilowatt hour. Also too, since we're talking about charging, let's talk about long distance travel. So I have traveled from Florida to Virginia a few times. It's like 850 miles. I've done the drive in one day. For one, when you're traveling that far, superchargers are welcome. Like I cannot wait till I can get to the next supercharger so I can get out of the car, spread my legs, get something to drink, use the bathroom, get some coffee, whatever. I don't have any issues um, with supercharging. The only thing I wanna point out, I love 250 kilowatt superchargers. They're the newest ones, they're the fastest ones, and you can get up to a thousand miles of range per hour at the, you know, the peak of it. The only downside with supercharging is that when your battery is lower is when it charges the fastest. So like say if you're charging at 20%, your Tesla's gonna charge faster than if you were at 80%. So one day I hope that Teslas will be able to charge very fast all the way through the entire level of battery life. That's gonna be a game changer and hopefully that does come to reality when the new 4680 cells come out. So when you're traveling long distances like me to see family, for whatever reason, they're rude and choose to live in areas with no superchargers and you may stress out about it, but for me it was a non-issue because once you get to your destination, if you're like, say, for example, staying at a family member's house, I have news for you, I have a secret. Every house has a Tesla charger. It's called an outlet, it's just a normal outlet. So this is my current charging setup. You can see I have my Tesla mobile connector wired up to an extension cord up there. 
and then it goes plugged in right here. It's not gonna charge very fast, but you can get about 40 miles of range overnight, which certainly helps out, especially if you're visiting a town and you're just traveling, seeing family, not a big deal. I also have charged at family members' houses using their dryer outlet in their garage, which basically allowed me to recoup like a full charge when I was at their house, it was great. Also to another thing to point out, I've had my Tesla since 2019, and as I travel from Florida for, to Virginia and just around in my area, it's so exciting to witness Tesla expanding. I have personally been to so many new superchargers that I didn't experience before. It's so cool like when you go on a trip one time and then you know maybe a year later go again and you're like, wow, like this supercharger wasn't here before. It's now more convenient, it's faster, and then you just like find your favorite superchargers. Like it's, it basically turns into like you're not forced to use every single one. You can use your favorites, you can use the fastest ones, you can choose the ones that have the best um, food and drink spots for your preferences. So that's really cool. Also my particular, particular area, there was only one or two superchargers close to me. And right now as I speak, we have three more going up. So that's really cool as well. Okay, so now let's talk about Tesla service and my maintenance and all of that stuff right now. So like the most major service I've gotten at Tesla is when I got my full self-driving computer installed. So if you have hardware 2.5 and you buy full self-driving, then you get the hardware 3 computer installed. That's what I did. Um, I didn't really have any issues that I can remember. The only problem is that I was texting them for updates and I was not getting a res response. I was like, what the hell, Tesla is ignoring me? That's not cool. Then I find out that they were responding to me, but due to texting and SMS not being very reliable, I wasn't getting the messages for whatever reason. So that wasn't cool either. But the coolest thing is that Tesla now has implemented messaging in their app. So basically, there's really no chance of it not going through. We're not relying on old, outdated technology to communicate about vital things to your Tesla's service. So that's a plus one for me, definitely. I hated communi communicating through SMS. Communicating through the app is way better, especially if you live in areas where your cell signal is poor, but you have Wi-Fi. The app is more guaranteed to work, you know? And as far as like any issues with my car that I had to take in for service, um, one time I took my Tesla in for service because when I first bought it, there was a wind noise in the driver mirror. It would just kind of whistle. Um, they fixed that, no problem. And the only other like non-maintenance related thing that Tesla service did for me was, um, I had an issue where like my charge port had something wrong with the pins. Like I'm not sure if a supercharger like broke it or whatever but they replaced my whole charge port and they gave me a new mobile charger because that one seemed messed up as well. Uh, that was free. Every time I went to Tesla um, for stuff like that, it was covered free under warranty. Okay, now let's talk about like the maintenance. So previously I talked about, you know, weird things that just need to be fixed. This is the maintenance. This is stuff that's basically going to pop up no matter what, even if your Tesla is perfect, you know, it's just regular maintenance. So most recently I had the 12 volt battery replaced. I got a warning on my Tesla. It said, warning, you know, your 12 volt battery is about to go bad. You better schedule an appointment ASAP because your Tesla could die. So I did that um, and scheduled it for the following week. They actually called me to get me in that weekend and I was able to get it way quicker and also you don't risk your Tesla um, dying in an inconvenient situation. And when they replaced the 12 volt battery, it was also free under warranty. It was completely covered. And you may wonder like replacing a 12 volt battery after two years, is that bad? I live in Florida. The heat is bad on batteries, like the 12 volt batteries. I had the same exact um, situation happen with any other car I had. It's, it was not unique to this Tesla. A lot of people wanted me to comment on my tires. So a lot of people are afraid of electric vehicles because they're heavy and they have a lot of torque. So people think they're going to eat up tires. At least for me, I'm not super aggressive with, with my driving. I will floor it every now and then, but for the most part, I drive pretty average. 
So my original 18 inch tires I had for about 20,000 miles. I didn't really see much wear on them. They seemed almost brand new when I got rid of them. And the reason I replaced them again is because I went from the 18 inch wheels to the 20 inch wheels. And I've had those for about 10,000 miles now. And obviously I don't really see much wear on those yet either. So if I had to guess, I probably get about 50,000 miles on a set of tires. Like, and that's pretty conservative. But once again, I don't own the performance Tesla and I drive pretty normal for the most part. I will have fun, but it's not every single red light I'm flooring it, which I think that's a lot of people's problems. Um, tire rotation, that is one thing that um, is smart to get done so your tires wear evenly. I opted to get my tires rotated from Tesla and it was expensive. I don't remember the price. I'll try to put it up on the screen, but it was expensive. Wiper fluid, <laughs> that's a big joke because that's like the biggest thing that Tesla owners do. They replace the wiper fluid, you just pour it in, not a big deal. And the cabin air filter, I've had my Tesla for two years. In theory, I should have replaced it by now. I'm bad, I have not replaced it. I know I need to, don't yell at me. But I have not noticed any type of, type of stinky smell in the cabin. A lot of people will say they notice like a mildewy smell and they need to replace their filter. I've never seen that issue on mine. Okay, let's talk about money really quick because we're actually in a very interesting part of the used car market where stuff is really holding on its value, I guess due to chip shortages, thus making used cars more valuable because people can't get new cars. Plus Tesla just in general is always in high demand and they hold their value well. So I paid about $50,000 even for my Tesla. Keep in mind, I also did pay $6,000 for the full self-driving. So $56,000 if we're not counting the wheels, which do people really value stuff like that? Not really. So if we look at the value of my car now on Kelly Blue Book values, for a trade-in price, the average is about $40,000. And then if you do private party, you can get a little bit more, like 42, 43. So the fact that my Tesla only went down in value by, you know, at most, at most $10,000, that's pretty cool. Also keep in mind, you know, I did get a tax credit as well. So if you factor that in, it's not very bad. I did mention full self-driving which sadly that is not valued appropriately at trade-in. So that's a currently a problem. If you paid for full self-driving and you're trying to trade your Tesla in, you're not gonna get appropriate value for it. That's one thing a lot of people are fighting for. We want full self-driving to either be transferable to a new Tesla, or we just wanna be given proper compensation for it. Also too, I think it's really important for me to mention that thanks to my Tesla Model 3, I was then inspired to get Tesla solar and power walls because the idea of having the full Tesla ecosystem where you collect solar energy, store it in your power walls, charge your Model 3 from solar and your whole house and have battery backup, that just seemed cool. So thank you for the Model 3 for inspiring me to go all out, get everything Tesla. I don't regret it at all. Tesla now has probably about $100,000 of my money. Okay, so let's talk about future plans. Like, do I plan on upgrading to the refreshed Model 3? Do I have any regrets about what I purchased? Would I do anything differently? Stuff like that. So first of all, remember I, I purchased the long range rear wheel drive model, which is not even sold anymore. And when I bought it, it I bought it off menu, and I believe it was about $2,000 cheaper than the all wheel drive model. At the time, I didn't really think I needed all-wheel drive because I live in Florida. I don't, it's not like I'm slipping around on ice or anything like that. I was a little bit disappointed to see that the all-wheel drive model later got an option to get an acceleration boost, whereas then mine got nothing. So I felt a little bit of FOMO there. Like I wish I would've just spent the $2,000 extra to then be given the opportunity to buy the upgrade to go even faster. Also too, there's the Performance Model 3. At the time when I purchased my Tesla for $50,000, I think the performance was closer to 70. And now you can get the performance for what, like 56,000? So 
not even $10,000 more than my Model 3. So if I was going to buy one right now, I would probably just go ahead and get the performance. Even if I don't think I'm gonna use it all the time, like that would kind of prevent me from having any type of FOMO, any type of regret that I didn't get the best model. But whatever, that's the, the joys and the pains of owning a Tesla because you could buy one today and tomorrow Tesla could completely revamp the pricing, make it cheaper, make it more expensive, add features, etc. It's It is what it is. Also too, some people ask me if I'm going to upgrade to the refreshed Model 3 because you know, that would give me an opportunity to get um, more range if I went with the all-wheel drive or I could get more performance if I went with the performance but then also an opportunity to enjoy the refreshed interior automatic lift gate heated steering wheel stuff like that in my opinion it is not worth taking the hit on depreciation it is not worth getting a new car loan for it is not worth having to pay for full self-driving again so if I went from my Tesla to another Tesla, any added range, I wouldn't really be able to take advantage on a daily basis. A powered lift gate, really, like for me, I don't value that. Um, the interior, it's new, it's nice, whatever. It's not worth getting a new car over, in my opinion. I'm perfectly content with my Tesla. Ultimately, my plan is to keep it as long as possible pay the loan off, have zero car payment, enjoy a super chill, easy to maintain electric vehicle that costs nothing to charge for my solar panels. I don't have to pay for gas. I don't have a car payment. I don't have to pay much for maintenance. That's my goal. I'm not going to be tempted by little upgrades that Tesla does here and there. Because in reality, Tesla is always improving their vehicles. They're always refining it so if you are tempted to upgrade your car every time tesla does that you're never going to be happy with what you have just buy a tesla and keep it for a while like that's the joys of an electric vehicle they're, they're super chill and easy to maintain quit wasting money on trying to upgrade every year or two so all that being said like i love my tesla model 3 after two years it still is super exciting to get in Every time I get a software update, it feels like I have a brand new vehicle all over again. I don't wish I had any other vehicle really. And if I do wish I had another vehicle, I wish it was a Tesla. So like, that's not a bad problem to have. There's frequently been times in my life, you know, where I look at a Volkswagen and then I look at a Chevy and then I look at a Ford, whatever. With a Tesla, I feel super, super happy like choosing Tesla and that brand and that company, and I do not regret it. I don't wanna to go to any other car manufacturer currently right now. Um, and that just makes it easier to keep my vehicle. Like I'm, I don't have anything bad to say. You know, overall, after two years, it's been a great experience, still fun, no regrets, no desire to really buy anything else, which says a lot. Okay guys, if you've made it this far, do not forget to like my video and subscribe. Do not forget to check out two more videos from me. I'll put my face right there to subscribe as well. Have a great day. See you later. Bye.